Hi, welcome to Smart PLS. Let's take a look at the PLS multigroup analysis, PLS MGA. Let's take a look at a PLS multigroup analysis example. We estimate the PLS path model for the first group. The result for the relationship between customer satisfaction and customer loyalty is 0.598 in this example. Then we estimate the PLS path model for the second group. Now the relationship between customer satisfaction and customer loyalty is 0 0.440. The difference of the two group specific PLS path model estimations is 0.158. The question that we would like to answer now is Is this difference of the group specific PLS path model estimations significant? The article by Marco Sarstedt, Jörg Hensler and Christian Ringle in Advances in International Marketing gives an overview of PLS multigroup analysis techniques. This article also gives examples of their application. More specifically, Sarstedt, Hensler and Ringle take a look at four techniques to compare two groups of data. In addition, they propose a new technique to compare more than two groups, the omnibus test of group differences. For the techniques that compare two groups of data, they find that the parametric approach is the most liberal technique. In contrast, the permutation-based approach and the confidence set approach are more conservative. Hensler's multigroup analysis approach is the most conservative technique in that comparison. We would like to focus on a fifth technique for comparing two groups of data, the PLS multigroup analysis or PLS MGA. This technique represents an extension of Hensler's multigroup analysis and has been proposed by Hensler, Ringle and Zinkovich in an article published in Advances in International Marketing. The starting point is Hensler's multigroup analysis. Select a certain path in the structural model that you would like to compare across groups. For example, customer satisfaction to customer loyalty in our example. Then run the bootstrapping procedure for each group of data, group 1 and group 2. For the selected relationship in the structural model, our customer satisfaction to customer loyalty relationship, copy and paste the columns of the group specific bootstrapping results in the same spreadsheet. Let's take a look at a results table representation. In the first column we have the number of the bootstrap sample. If you run the bootstrapping procedure for 5000 samples, we have the rows number 1 to number 5000 in the first column. In the second column, we have the bootstrapping results for the data of group number 1. So we look into the customer satisfaction to customer loyalty relationship. And when running the bootstrapping procedure for 5000 samples, we get 5000 results for this relationship. In column number 3, we have the bootstrapping results for the customer satisfaction to customer loyalty relationship and the data of group number 2. In column number 4, we compare if the result for group number 1 is larger than the result of group number 2. If this is the case, we plug in the value of 1 in column number 4. Otherwise, if the result for group number 1 is not larger than the result of group number 2, we plug in a zero in column number four. In the last step, we count how often group number one is larger than group number two. This can be done by summing up the values in the fourth column. The sum of one values in the last column indicates how often group number one is larger than group number two. We take the result and divide it by n in our example 5000 bootstrap samples and thereby we obtain a percentage value. So the result represents the probability that group 1 is larger than group 2. 
This percentage can now be used for significance testing. Let's consider a probability of error level of 5%. Percentages smaller than 0.05 indicate a significant difference of the group-specific PLS path coefficients for the selected relationship. So in our example, we look at the customer satisfaction to customer loyalty relationship. There's a difference of this relationship for the estimation for the data set of group 1 and of group 2. If the percentage of the Hensler's MGA indicates a probability of 0.05 or smaller, the difference of the group-specific path model estimations is significant. But what does a small percentage of 0.05 mean? Well, it means that we only have very few 1 values in column number 4. So the small percentage results from the fact that the bootstrapping results for group number 2 are almost always larger than the bootstrapping results of group number 1. While low percentages of 0.05 indicate a significant outcome, we could also obtain very large percentages. In that case, we have a lot of 1 values in column number 4, indicating that the results of group number 1 are often larger than the results of group number 2. If this percentage is 0.95 or higher, this also indicates a significant difference of the group-specific PLS path coefficients for the selected relationship. In summary, it is important to take a look at the low probabilities and high probabilities at the same time when carrying out Hensler's MGA. Values of 0.05 and smaller as well as values of 0.95 and larger, both indicate a significant difference of the group-specific PLS path coefficients for the selected relationship. Now we take a look at the PLS multigroup analysis, the PLS MGA. This method is an extension of Hensler's MGA. Before we looked at the bootstrapping results and compared row-wise the outcome of group 1 and group 2. Now, we make all comparisons between bootstrap coefficients. This is the key extension of the PLS MGA approach. For this purpose, we create a matrix representation of results. Let's consider the customer satisfaction to customer loyalty relationship again. We select the data of group 1 and run the bootstrapping routine for 5000 samples. We paste the results in the green area of the matrix representation. Then we select the data of group 2. Again, we run the bootstrapping procedure for 5000 samples. We paste the results in the orange area of the matrix representation. Now let's take a look at the first bootstrapping result of group number 1. We can compare this outcome with all 5,000 bootstrapping results of group number 2. And in fact we can make this comparison for all 5,000 outcomes of group number 1. This means when we make all comparisons between bootstrap coefficients in this example for the customer satisfaction to the customer loyalty relationship, we compare 5,000 times 5,000 coefficients which makes 25 million comparisons. When making these comparisons, we again check if group number 1 is larger than group number 2. If the bootstrapping coefficient of group number 1 is larger than that of group number 2, we plug in a 1, otherwise we plug in a 0. Then we count the number of 1s and divide it by the total number of comparisons, which is 25 millions in our example, and obtain the probability that group number 1 is larger than group number 2. The percentage calculation principally follows the described principles. However, in PLS MGA we need to correct for the difference between the original parameter estimate and the average over the bootstrap values. This is similar to a man whitney u test. You can find details on the computation in the publication by Hensler, Ringle and Zinkovic. 
The final result of the PLSMGA is a percentage value. And again, we interpret very low percentages of 0.05 and lower, or large percentage values of 0.95 and higher, as a significant difference of group-specific PLS path coefficients for the selected relationship. Thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy using Smart PLS and please visit our webpage at www.smartpls.com.